Hello, it's Dr. David Green, founder and CEO of R3 Stem Cell International. Today we're discussing stem cell therapy for kidney failure in the Philippines. So first let's start with what does the kidney actually do? Well, it turns out they're very, very important to our lives. They remove waste products and excess fluid from our bodies. They remove a lot of drugs. If the drug gets excreted from the kidneys, it's important for that. They do balance our body's fluids. They release hormones that regulate blood, blood pressure. They produce an active form of vitamin D that promotes strong, healthy bones, and they control the production of red blood cells. So what are the reasons that a kidney might fail over time? Well, healthy kidneys are really active. They filter about 200 liters of blood every day. High blood pressure and diabetes are the two most common causes of kidney failure. 13% of all adults in the United States have CKD. With regards to the Philippines, it's actually a little bit higher. Um, when you look at high blood pressure and diabetes, you know, any, either one of those can lead to kidney failure. But when you have both of those together, it's really a source of, of, of a problem. So there are various medications that over time can lead to kidney failure, and if you're taking more than what's recommended, such as anti-inflammatories, NSAIDs, antibiotics, antivirals, various transplant medications, HIV medications, or possibly diuretics. Additional causes of kidney failure can include polycystic kidney disease, glomerulonephritis, Usually it's not something that happens overnight. It could be if someone were to, you know, do something like drink antifreeze or something, but usually it's a long drawn out process. It's the end result of a gradual loss of kidney function. And most people don't have symptoms until they get below 15 to 20% of kidney function, then they start to really notice it. So CKD, um, end-stage renal disease is already the seventh leading cause of death among Filipinos. One Filipino develops chronic renal failure every hour of every day. More than 5,000 Filipino patients are presently undergoing dialysis. So when you look at the five stages of CKD, one is mild, uh, where you have a glomerular filtration rate over 90. You know, the goal is to have it at 100, which is basically 100%. Two is mild GFR with a G, mild is GFR with 60 to 89, and then you know you're still not going to have really any symptoms. Three is moderate GFR of 30 to 59. Still, most most people in stage three don't have significant symptoms. It's when you get to stage four when you really start to notice it: lack of energy, lack of urine. Um, GFR is 15 to 29. Uh, blood pressure can go up, patients get anemic because they're not producing the red blood cells. And in stage five, that's complete failure. GFR is less than 15. A lot of times people are either on dialysis or heading in that direction very quickly. So what are the symptoms? Well, they're going to vary between patients. It's not standard um, all the time. It can be itching, muscle, muscle cramps, feeling sick, vomiting, um, no appetite, Lethargy, just kind of have this lazy feeling. Swelling in your hands and feet, possibly back pain, uh, peeing more or less than normal, trouble breathing and or sleeping. So when you look at the traditional treatments, um, they include lifestyle changes. It could be there's a significant dietary malnutrition. Uh, smoking is never gonna be good for kidney failure. Um, and then exercise, increasing that can, can help lose weight and you know, reduce diabetes and things like that. Controlling the blood pressure and the blood sugars, um, and then various medications uh, to help protect the bone quality and density, uh, reduce swelling, um, improve the anemia, like with erythropoietin, uh, reduce cholesterol and high blood pressure. All right, so the last frontier, and this we'll talk about this before we talk about stem cell therapy, would be dialysis and then transplant. So dialysis artificially removes waste products and extra fluid from the blood. Um, it does as much as it can of what the regular kidney does, um, not everything. Close to 40,000 Filipinos right now are on dialysis. Uh, it's either two to three times per week for about four hours. There's risks of infection, possibly a clot at the area of where the fistula is placed. Um, 
PhilHealth will cover up to 144 annual sessions of dialysis now, um, which is a, it's a good change from the past few years. The average lifespan of an individual who's on dialysis for kidney failure is between five and 10 years. So it's not like you can be on it permanently and live out the rest of a normal life. Now, transplant has been an issue in the Philippines uh, for years. A lot of, you know, illegal things have gone on and there's, you know, new laws and things like that, enforcement. But PhilHealth does cover up to 600,000 pesos for a transplant procedure. Um, one Filipino dies every hour due to kidney failure. Um, only 500 of the 40,000 patients each year uh, find a match. Um, transplant patients do live longer than those on dialysis, but they do need to take immunosuppressive medications for life. Um, the ones who receive a living kidney donor can survive 12 to 20 years, and those who receive a cadaver uh, kidney live a little less, 8 to 12 years on average. All right, so stem cell therapy has been very effective for kidney injury. Uh, let's go through a few studies. This is a 2020 paper out of Brazil. It actually reviewed 13 studies for acute kidney injury. Cellular therapy with mesenchymal stem cells, which is what we use, has benefits in preclinical studies through various mechanisms, such as reducing inflammation, anti-apoptotic, which is reducing cell death, um, reducing oxidative stress, uh, antifibrotic, which means it prohibits scar formation, uh, pro-angiogenic, it produces new blood vessels, um, and immunomodulatory, which can uh, stop the body from hurting itself uh, from the immune system going awry. Uh, the paper stated that cellular therapy with mesenchymal stem cells is very promising and should be part of the treatment of acute kidney injury patients in combination with other approaches already available. So here's an article, uh, MSC Transplantation, a Promising Therapeutic Strategy to Manage the Onset and Progression of Diabetic Nephropathy. So it's a promising therapeutic strategy to manage the um, diabetes nephropathy onset and progression, not only because it's very safe, but because it does have protective benefits from the mesenchymal stem cells. Now you can see in the picture, um, the different ways of giving it. You can give it intraperitoneal, IV, intraarterial, into the bone or into the kidney tissue itself. Our centers use um, into the vein uh, in just a simple IV because the procedure is very safe and the stem cells do find their way to the damaged kidneys. Um, here's an article, mesenchymal stem cell derived extracellular vesicles for renal repair. These extracellular vesicles are called exosomes. This paper was out of the Mayo Clinic. Um, we use exosomes in conjunction with the stem cells for the better outcomes. Um, accumulating evidence indicates that mesenchymal stem cells release the extracellular vesicles, which are the exosomes, that deliver genes, microRNA, and proteins to the recipient cells, which act as a mediator to help those cells repair and regenerate themselves. They exert their trophic and repair effects by basically shuttling their cargo, which is what we just mentioned, the genes, the microRNA, and the proteins, um, which can then help those cells that are damaged repair themselves for a healthier kidney. Um, here's a study looking once again at umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cell derived extracellular vesicles, which are the exosomes can safely ameliorate the progression. This, so this was 40 patients randomized who had stages three and four. They noticed improved GFR, creatinine, and BUN. There were no significant adverse events throughout the study period of a year. So the administration of the cord blood derived exosomes is safe and can ameliorate the inflammatory immune reaction, improve the overall kidney function. Uh, Cell-based therapies for experimental chronic kidney disease. This actually looked at, it's an animal um, study. It looked at 71 animal studies. Um, Cell-based therapies improved all the parameters and reduced the progression of CKD. Um, so this was very effective in preclinical studies um, of CKD. So this is a paper out of U USC in the United States. 
they showed that administration of bone marrow derived mesenchymal stem cells um, were most effective in slowing the development and the progression of CKD. It reduced uh, the BUN, improved um, the interstitial fibrosis, and it was overall um, very effective at uh, decreasing proteinuria, inflammation, um, and they also showed that there were no tumor formation. So what we're seeing is that many small studies, more that are coming out every few months, uh, and our own experience show that stem cell therapy for kidney failure is not only very safe, but it's typically a very effective uh, treatment. We do know that high stem cell numbers are necessary. Thankfully, we do offer those high stem cell numbers to patients for a very cost-effective amount. You don't need to inject into the renal vein or artery. We do it into the regular arm, peripheral IV. That works really, really well. The umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells, which we use, and the exosomes give fantastic results. Um, in addition, it should be noted that this is not a standalone treatment. It does need to be performed in conjunction with some of these conventional treatments to get the best outcomes. Um, we don't use embryonic stem cells. Those are the ones that come from aborted fetuses. We don't use those. They can be dangerous because they can get immediately rejected by one's body or form tumors. Um, we use mesenchymal stem cells, which neither of those are a problem. Nobody rejects the material and tumor formation doesn't um, occur. So the treatment program in the Philippines, uh, we have a great location in Manila. The process starts with a free phone consultation from our licensed, experienced stem cell doctors. We do have patient concierge reps who can assist with all the travel logistics. I mean, if you're local, you just drive. But um, you know, if you have to fly in, then we can pick you up at the airport, take you to and from the clinic and the airport. And what I put together is the most cost-effective stem cell therapy in the world by far. So stem cells are not a cure, okay? So patients are going to need repeat therapies over, you know, every year or two years. Um, and it does need to be performed in conjunction with top traditional treatments. We've incorporated those into our patient regimen, but that's where you get the best outcomes. You can't expect the stem cells to, you know, fix it all when it comes to treatment. So our umbilical cord stem cell tissue comes from the United States where we have a really long vetted program that abides by the FDA regulations. We have a pristine safety record. We've done over 17,000 procedures in the last 10 years with no significant adverse events. Um, we do process with FDA quality assurance standards, which produces pure and potent stem cells, growth factors, exosomes, cytokines, secretomes, micro and messenger RNA. So to get the process started, you can visit us online at r3stemcell.com slash Philippines. Uh, please call us uh, with the USA prefix of plus one, 888-988-0515. We'll get you set up with a free consultation to talk to one of our doctors. They can look at your medical records and decide, you know, if you're a candidate or if we need to do a little work first to get you to become a candidate. Uh, we only want to really, really help you if we think that you're a candidate, right? So about 20% of patients with kidney failure are going to be too far. Uh, we won't be able to help, but the vast majority, you know, we can. So get in touch with us and we'll work with you to get you some help. Thank you for watching.